and welcome to Rise Up with Jenny and Katie. We have another amazing show. We are speaking about deliverance and we have our own apostle and pastor with us, Tim Karskaden. Welcome, Pastor Tim. Thank you, it's good to be here today. Oh, we're so glad to have you back. Our pastor is a prophet to the nations. He teaches the body of Christ how to hear the prophetic voice of the Lord. But he goes to nations and he shakes them by the power of God and the word of God in his mouth. So it is an honor to have you back with us. It's good to be here. Yes, we can't wait to hear more on deliverance. Yes. So if if those that are watching have don't know what deliverance is, what is deliverance? And I, I, if you watch the last show, you'll have a little base for that. But deliverance obviously is getting free. Uh, salvation means deliverance, we talked about that. And when we walk out our salvation, we get free of everything that has a, a bind on us in any way. That is what Jesus offered us. You know, when He died and He was resurrected, that's what resurrection power is. We were, we were dead to sin and Christ set us free and then we walk in that. So our job as believers, for me as a, a leader as well, working in deliverance, is to deal with the soulish issue of somebody, their mind, their will, and emotions and where that demon is, and if it's gotten in there in any way. And many people don't believe a Christian can have demons. And I believe the word possession needs to be properly looked, because a lot of translations don't really have that word. Possession means 100%. I don't believe any Christian has 100% demons in them. I do not believe that at all. Your spirit man is where Christ resides. That's where the light is. But that soulish realm is where he gets in through those open doors we talked about in the last session. And he, and he can have a place in there. And those are areas where it looks weird. If we were to be a tree, if you could see yourself as a fruit tree, and there are areas of your life that you're very productive, you're producing fruit in, you know, you look wonderful, you're lush, you're green. And then there's other areas of your life you're barren. Yeah. And there's nothing happening, there's no fruit in your life. And so you have to question what, what's going on in my life? Why do I have fruit in this area of my life, but I'm barren in this area? And we always say this, if you're gonna find the problem, that you're gonna find the root. Mm -hmm. uh, bad root, bad fruit. So we have to go down to that root and say, where is that? Where's that anger, that bitterness, that frustration, that rejection, whatever issue that is, because that's where the barrenness is coming from. So when I go down, that's sometimes in deliverance, we go down and we say, we lay an ax to the root of that thing. We break that yeah. thing when we pray that God would break that. Revelation is key. I can't consecrate my life to the Lord and give my life to the Lord without revelation. So we always say revelation leads to consecration. Consecration means I dedicate everything I have to God, but if I don't know I have a problem, how do I consecrate that area of my life? So that's where the prophetic revelation, you talked you know, last time about counselors versus deliverers. And I think as a counselor, I as a counselor, when I counsel somebody, I'm functioning in the prophetic the whole time I'm counseling. I give practical principles, yes, but I'm also listening in the spirit. I say I, I listen to the person about 50% of the time, and the other 50% of the time I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. What are you saying, Lord? They said this, but what are this? what's really going on in their life? And then we can pull that out. And then sometimes it just takes me or whoever is working with that person to tell them, here's your issue. And you tell it to them and you can see like sometimes the veils will be removed and something awakens inside of them like, that's my problem. Mm -hmm. And now we start a journey of deliverance. And once a person will actually recognize they have a problem, deliverance becomes very simple. It's very hard when you're in denial. Wow. I don't have an anger problem. Well, everybody who knows you says you do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, no, I don't. The fact that I scream all the time doesn't mean anything. You know, you can, yeah. this is denial, and, I, and I'm exaggerating a little bit in, in some of the, the um, explanation, but sometimes it can be so simple that you don't know it, that I, I'm hiding my rejection. I never let anybody near me. I had one young lady in the church. She had such rejection spirit on her. I mean, it was so wicked, and she didn't want anybody near. Literally, she didn't want anybody in her physical space. Wow. She didn't want anybody within five feet of her. And uh, so the Lord says to me, bust her bubble and get in her zone. Mm. And, I, and I said, okay, Lord. And I, and I got real close to her, much like what I am with you right now. She broke out in hives. Wow. I could see her neck, just hives broke out wow. because of fear that I was going to reject her and hurt her. Found out later she'd been abused. She'd wow. been through a lot in life by somebody who was a leader in her life. I represented leadership. Mm. So I knew the Lord was using me in that moment wow. to break that spirit. And I told her, I said, here's what I saw. The Lord told me, and I told her what I said, what the Lord said to me, not to, that you didn't want 
want anybody near her. And I said, I came purposefully and the Lord's breaking this right now. And she said, that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. See, the confession of the truth made it simple. Yeah. And then I prayed the prayer of faith. It came off of her. And to this day, she gets near everybody. She talks to everybody. It wow. broke something off of her life that day. Now she would have denied it and said, I don't have an issue. I just don't like people around me. Now she's mm -hmm. put the wall back up. Now we've got a harder task ahead of us because now we're going to have to get to a place where she finally will confess, I have an issue. And once we get there, uh, we, can, we can get some freedom. And I, I will always say this, doing deliverance on anybody, any form of deliverance, it almost always starts with forgiveness. Somebody has hurt them, somebody has abused them, somebody has wounded them somewhere along the line. And we started in, in that, I was doing a demon-possessed girl who was possessed, she was a Satanist. And we'd always start every session with, I'm gonna forgive my father, I'm gonna forgive whoever. And at the moment I'd say, let's confess this, let's repent, she would manifest demons before we could even finish the prayer. Wow. Because the enemy knew if she forgave, she would be free. So he would reinforce wow. the pain and the trauma that she had been in. Wow. You, they don't deserve to be forgiven. Look what they did to you. They did this and this to you. You mm -hmm. cannot forgive them. And so therefore she would hold on to her demonic and she wouldn't let go. But the more she started confessing and forgiving, the more she got free. I think one of the quickest ways to for, get for, uh, deliverance is through forgiveness, forgiving others. And it's hard because, you know, people do horrible things to us. Yeah. And in the natural, they don't deserve to be forgiven yeah. in the natural. But in the spirit, we've been forgiven of much. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we forgive much? And, I, and it gets really hard when you get in abuse cases and things like that. That's when it gets very difficult. How does a little girl justify or understand why a man was abusing her at 12 years old, at eight years old? And we have to find a place there where God will give them the grace to forgive. And when they do, they get free. I mean, I've seen people get free immediately, and I've seen people get free after months of work. It just depends on their willingness to open up their heart. And then, of course, the trauma that's inside of them as well. Wow. Well, I would love for you to explain how do you do a deliverance on a person and, and also adding to that the groupings of spirits that run together. And I'm sure you've done some too, yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, you can share as well. It's different in every scenario. There's no one way. And, I, and when I first started doing deliverance, I tried to do the same pattern every time. And I was successful at first, and then it became less successful. And I called the person who was training me in deliverance. I said, I don't know what's going on. It worked last time, it's not working this time. And it's, oh, you're trying formulas now. Uh, and, 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 and what happens is the demonic recognizes that you trust the formula and not the deliverer, Jesus wow, himself. Wow. Uh, so you'll find that in a lot of deliverance ministries, they have, a, they have a check, they do this, this, and this. Well, you know, the devil figures that out. Mm -hmm. you don't, you're not trusting the Lord, you're trusting that checklist. Wow. And it had to be where it's so uh, organic in the spirit yeah. that with each person it's different. And the Bible says to train up in a child in the way he should go, right? And, and that way when he's older, he'll not depart. And that tells you that every child has to be trained a different way. Train up mm. that child, not all children the same way, because each child has a different gift. Yeah. Well, same thing, everybody has a different issue in their life. And so I need the Holy Spirit to guide me and deliver me, I mean, help me deliver that person through that cycle. So a deliverance session can be so simple. It can be a simple prayer and it can be somewhere it's very intense. And it's never the same. It depends on how strong the stronghold is inside of them, how long it's been there, yeah. and also how much they don't wanna let go of it. You know, if I'm, if I'm dealing with a man with lust, pornography or whatever, and he knows it's wrong, but he doesn't want to quit. He enjoys it. Yeah, he yeah. enjoys it. So now I got a battleground. I got to get into a place where he sees that as sin and he needs to see it, how it hurts him, how it affects God, how it affects those around him, how it affects his wife, his family, everybody like that. So, and, and that's not as easy as, as it is with somebody else who said, look, I got this, I'm sick of this, I hate this in my life, yeah. I want to be free of this. Those are a lot easier. And those are Good. simple prayers we can pray. Uh, there was one time I was dealing with a young girl. She came out of the occult and uh, 
and it was a very difficult season for her life, but she needed to be free. She was suicidal. So we're going in a session, and as we're starting to pray with her, I was telling her, you know, I, I was telling the scripture about when you cleanse a house, you gotta fill it back up. I was telling her, we're gonna get you free tonight, but the fact is, you have gotta pour into the Lord after this. I can't just set you free, let the Lord set you free, and then you go back to your old lifestyle, your pain, your trauma, all that. And, and all of a sudden, there was a demonic that manifested, and it didn't manifest in a normal way, like growling or anything. It just talked like she did. And she started cursing me and said, who do you think you are? Are you holier than thou? And she started cursing me. And, you know, and I just said, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I don't need this tonight. You know, I was in a place where I'd had a long day and, and I, I was about to walk out of the room and the Holy Spirit says to me, um, uh, he says, don't listen to her. That's a lie. She wants to be free. And, uh, and so I turned around and I looked at her. I said, you know what? You just lied to me. I said, that is not what your spirit man wants. Your spirit man wants to be free right now in the name of Jesus. And when I did, she started vomiting, literally wow. vomiting right there on the floor. Demons started coming out. All I had to do was call out the lie. Mm. And the lie had such a loud voice in her life that it superseded her voice. It was such a stronghold. And so when we got the lie down, the truth wow. became relevant in that situation and became evident and she got free in that very moment. I mm. was as surprised as anybody, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect that. I expected to pray a long time and, and do, do more work in that situation. But when the Lord's Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes in that situation mm. and He reveals truth, the demons have to leave. Now you gotta remember this, Jesus never called out demons in a sense. When he showed up, demons manifested. They came to him. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They manifested because the presence was so great. Yeah. And for me and for you and for all of us, that's our heart's desire, that we have so much of the Lord in us yeah. Come on. that when we show up, yeah. they do manifest. And it does happen. Somebody may manifest and you may not see it as demonic, anger, bitterness, uh, they may be just vile towards you and you just think, hey, that person's got a bad attitude. Right. What you don't understand is the light in you mm -hmm. has revealed the darkness in them. And so when you got near them, this thing rose up. So I, instead of taking a negative there, I look for a positive. I was praying for a guy once at the altar and he was angry at me. He had asked me to call him back and I didn't call him back. I got busy and I forgot. And we were at the altar and he started cursing me. He was a, he was a wow. deacon in the church. Oh, he was cursing me and I mean, just lighting into me. You say you're a pastor, you say you care for me. You didn't even return my call and da da da. He was lighting into me and I was like, Give me a break, you know, give me a break in the situation. But then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, he's not mad at you. He's mad at his father because his mm -hmm. father was never there for him. And he, then I saw him like a 10 year old boy in a vision. I saw a vision, he was a 10 year old boy and I saw his dad with a belt just beating oh, him. Wow. And, and the Lord says, he thinks you're his dad. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So I looked at him and I said, and I told him exactly what I saw. I said, I saw you as a young man. I saw what your daddy wasn't there for you when you called him. And mm -hmm. because I didn't call you back, you related that story. And when I did, he just started weeping right mm -hmm. there. We prayed, he got free. That rejection started falling off of him right wow. then and there in that moment. See, the Holy Spirit can do in one second yeah. what a counselor may have to spend years with somebody trying to talk them out of that or trying to get them to a place where they'll change. And like you said, I think uh, we were talking about before the show, you, you can't counsel a demon out. Yeah. You've got to speak to it. Yeah. You've got to ask it to move and get out of there. But I also need to know where it is. So for us as a prophetic generation, we have a special inside gift where it talks about in Hebrews 4.12, that the, the double-edged sword goes to the very sinew, the very bones. It knows the thoughts and intents of men's heart. So I can see the intent of their heart because the Holy Spirit will show it to me. And I, I almost feel like it's cheating sometimes. It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's a gift from the Lord. Whereas, you know, I've, I've been with counselors and they get stuck with a client. Secular counselors have asked me to come into their sessions and I'll go in their session and within 20, 10 minutes, I can see what's wrong in the spirit. And the counselor goes, how'd you do that? I've been working with this person for two years and I can't get them free. I said, well, that's what the Holy Spirit does for yeah. us. He can see their heart while you're trying to figure it out through conversation, Holy Spirit can get in there. And Jesus, mm -hmm. when Jesus set the free, set people free, it was immediate. Remember when he would say, uh, they'd say, son of David, you know, have mercy upon us. And he said this, your sins are forgiven. What does that tell us? It tells us that their sin was tied to their blindness. Mm -hmm. And they were actually having a physical manifestation because wow. of a sin issue in their life. 
And so when he forgave them of their sins, their sight was healed. So he dealt with the issue of their heart and brought them into in true light and true salvation as also having true sight. So that's what we want. We want to see the whole body, spirit, soul, and body totally healed. And when we get deliverance, so a session, your question to start with was, what does it look like? It looks different in every situation. It, it almost always depends on the person we're praying for and their willingness to work on their issues. If they really want to work, it's so easy. I want to say the Holy Spirit, I want to say to anybody watching this right now, yeah. it's easy when the Holy Spirit has access to your heart. But when you fight the Holy Spirit and you want to hold on to this because you feel you deserve to hang, hold on to this because of what somebody did to you, how evil it was, guess what? You get to keep that. And that becomes right. part of your DNA. And that's not who you're supposed to be. We have to break that cycle. And also with the sessions, I know the some that we've done has been like fear, worry, anxiety, and the gangs together. Do you see this a lot? In Absolutely. Our- and I, I think one of the, the rejection is by far uh, the number one open door. I think we all humans, uh, it's natural to s- struggle with rejection. Mm-hmm. Uh, we start when we're young, we want to please our mom and dad. And when they don't recognize our, our work, our effort, uh, then the next thing you know, we, we, we interpret that as rejection. And our interpretation is not always true, but then it starts a stronghold. So the enemy looks at us and says, well, there's a cycle. Every time mom and dad doesn't do that for them, they receive that as rejection. So the enemy starts starts adding to that. So he starts telling them, you know, you're not wanted. You know, your, your dad and your mom don't want you. And so that's another gang. That's a new demon that gets into it. started rejection. Now this unwanted demon. Then you have this unloved. You're not loved. You're not loved at all. You're unimportant. And so these other guys start jumping in. So now these have voices. And we know what that's like. We think it's just our mind. Mm-hmm. We think we're just mm-hmm. thinking things up, but those are actually demonic voices. Mm-hmm. They have a voice and their job is to do that. I always tell people this, working in the demonic realm, uh, Satan torments demons. He's a tormentor. So mm-hmm. the last thing they want to do is be around Satan. So one of the safest places for a demon to be is in a human, because if they're in a human, then Satan leaves them alone. He's not omnipresent. So he can't just go around and bother them all the time. So they are selfish in the sense that they're inside of somebody to save themselves from torment. Mm. And so they're avoiding it. So the, the idea is, let me find families that have generational issues because it's much easier to be in that family bloodline because they were all like that. They all struggle with this. And so it's a very simple thing. And so they're friends, the gangs we call them. We say, come on in. You know, this is, this is a group of people that we know function this way. We know they struggle in this way. So y'all come on. And so they bring them and it builds and it builds and it builds. Mm -hmm. And eventually it'll get to a place where it'll lead them to a a death cycle where they're, they're doing, you know, things harmful to their own selves. I had one guy once I was dealing with, he was a, a cocaine addict and a meth addict, and we were trying to get him free. And it was amazing. When he was low in his life, he'd get close to Jesus. When he became successful, he would destroy his life. He was like, and I said, Lord, what's going on here? And the Lord said to me, he has such self-hatred and he has so un, such unworthiness on him. He doesn't feel like he's, he's worth being successful. So he goes into destructive behavior pattern to destroy his success. And so we started identifying that. And so when he was poor and didn't have a job, he fell in love with Jesus because he felt like that was his plot in life. That's what he deserved because he had been a drug addict. He'd done all these things wrong. And so when we taught him how to forgive himself, I said, first of all, you're going to forgive yourself and you're going to forgive yourself. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we dealt with that. All of a sudden, he started feeling worthiness on his life. So then he could have be successful in his business and everything he did. And to this day, he's in business and he's doing much better now. He still struggles to a degree because he feels unworthy. But that thing builds and those demons come and finally you get into a place of self-pity and hatred. And it'll actually lead you to a spirit of suicide. Suicide is the last thing that happens to somebody who struggles with rejection. It goes from one level to the next level to the next level. And when they get in self-pity and unworthiness, I'm unloved, I'm unimportant, then all the voices really get loud. And we call that a tormenting spirit. It's tormenting at night, they lay in bed, they can't make it go away. 
and then the next thing they'll actually play it out. They'll actually live it out. I, it, it's better for me not to be on the earth. It's better for everybody else. And see, that's a lie. Yeah. Because what are they going to do? They're going to create pain for everybody yeah. should they die. Mm -hmm. So it's totally opposite of that. And plus they're destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the very thing that God created them to be. Wow. That's wow. incredible. You know, you talk about... Um, forgiveness and repentance as being one of the first things to get rid of the strongholds. And you tell a beautiful story about your mom. Can you share that sure. with us? Yeah, my mom had a horrible lifestyle growing up. Uh, she was sexually abused when she was a little girl, uh, uh, physically abused by her family, uh, just a horrible lifestyle. She got married very young just to get out of the house. I think she was 16 or 17 years old. Mm -hmm. She just got married to get out of the house because of, it was such an abusive uh, home. And so she went through a lot of things. She's married three times, went through a whole lifestyle. But she came to the Lord uh, late in her life and uh, really got on fire for God. Loved Jesus mm -hmm. with all her heart. Had more faith than any woman I'd ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. I couldn't keep up with my mom with faith. She was just amazing. Well, she got cancer, uh, was in the hospital, got put on a ventilator. And uh, so I didn't know she was going to make it. The doctors told me she was going to die. She wasn't going to make it. So I have a dream. And in the dream, the Lord says, I don't want her to go yet because she has all this unforgiveness and this bitterness in her life. And I want to receive her with great reward. Mm. And so I, I, there she is. She was on a ventilator and she could talk. Uh, I mean, she could hear me and we could talk back and forth. She could yes or no, or she could write on a, on a tablet and all. And I said, hey, mom, the Lord gave me a dream and said that it's time to deal with your bitterness of what you did, what happened to you, all the abuse, all the things that you went through, the unforgiveness you're going through. And I said, I really believe if you'll deal with this, God will heal you. And I said, do you want to deal with it? And she said, yes. And so then I had another dream and the Lord said it actually was her time to die, but he was giving her this extra time because he wanted her to be free. And that was the grace of God on her life. His Bible says it appointed a man to die once and then yeah. the judgment, right? She missed her appointment. Mm. God did not let her die because she, he didn't want her to come before him in the state that she was in because she would have come without reward. So we were praying and we went through this whole thing, I mean, on and on. And finally, uh, she started improving her health. And uh, even one of the Muslim doctors said to me, you know, she's not going to make it. And I said, well, we're people of faith. Mm -hmm. And I said, I know what God's doing in this situation. And he's going to heal her because I was dealing her heart as well as her body. And so when she repented, and I took her through prayers of repentance, you know, she couldn't talk, she could write and wow. say, yes, yes, yes. And so we prayed these prayers of her and we forgave who abused her. We forgave all the, her husbands and all the things that she had been through. And she agreed, she started getting better. So they came in, they said, we're gonna take the ventilator off of her. I said, okay, so I was in the room and I watched them take that ventilator. And when they pulled that thing out of her mouth, I saw a demon attached to the bottom of that ventilator. Mm -hmm. And I literally saw it fly out of the room. And mm -hmm. she sat up in bed, totally breathing, no problems, yeah. totally healed. The doctors, the nurses yeah. were in the room. They were shocked, absolutely shocked. And I ran into that Muslim doctor in the hall several weeks later. He mm -hmm. saw me and her walk in the hall. His mouth hit the floor and I said, that's right, my God took care of her. And it was a testimony not only for my mom, but a testimony for that Muslim. Yeah. It was a testimony of what God can do when he wants to set free. But she had to repent. She had to go through that. And I think that's the key to deliverance. If you're not going to repent and admit you've got issues and you open the door, mm -hmm. then and if you continue to blame it on everybody else, you'll never get free. You have to confess your portion of it. Yes, they were wrong. Yes, what they did was wrong, but you have to, you have to do yeah. that. Okay. Yes. That's powerful. Well, will you lead the viewers into a repentant prayer Good. that they could receive deliverance Good. in their own life? Good. Well, if you're watching that camera, I mean this television right now, however you're watching on computer or whatever, I speak to you right now. I say the Lord loves you and can set you free. Yeah. Confess your sins, confess your faults. God is faithful and just to forgive you. And just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me of bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, evil thoughts, any door that I've opened, Lord, forgive me right now. Lord, I open my heart to your freedom and to your deliverance, and I want to be totally free. I don't want any hindrance from the realm of darkness. I want to walk in total light. And I pray that for you right now. If you need Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is the time. You can receive and, and begin to enjoy this freedom that comes from Christ. Just ask him into your heart right now. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Set me free according to your word and your power.
Now, I, there are some people I'm seeing right now, and we only have a minute or so here, but I'm seeing some people right now. That there's somebody here, like you've had this major shooting pain down your left arm, and you didn't understand why. And the Lord said, it's a past issue. And I saw something on your past. I saw the enemy had really like put knots on your spine and that you've been told you have uh, these, these bulges in your spine. And I'm telling the Lord said, that's tied to a past issue where somebody stabbed you in the back. Mm -hmm. Somebody wounded you, you trust them and they wounded you. And if you'll forgive them right now, the Lord said he'll heal you both spiritually and he'll heal you physically and your arm will be healed and that shooting pain will go away and you'll be delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. I pray that over you right now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody that your family uh, is so messed up right now that you don't think they're going to make it. There's some, uh, many of your family members are in drugs and they're just bound. Some of them are living lifestyle, destructive lifestyles like that one I told you about a while ago. And the Lord said, this is a place you have cried out and you're trying to find that they're doing good. But the Lord says, don't worry about what they're doing. Cry out for their soul. And the Lord said, I'm going to redeem them. And the, the cycle of addiction is going to be broken off your family. And even you have struggled with it at times. And the Lord said, it's going to be broken off of you first and it's going to go all the way down your bloodline. The Lord is going to touch many, many right there. And I want to say this for family deliverance as well. If you're seeing cycles in your family, you know, the same sin generation after generation, that is not your portion. Jesus died not only to set you free, but to set your family free. As for you and your house, let it serve the Lord. And it starts with you. And when you get free, it will touch everybody in your family. We pray that over you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Ooh, I received that from my own family. Amen. Yes. Father, we just thank you right now for what yes. you're doing yes. on this show. God, we just yes. thank you that your power is going forth. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I, I feel freer even amen. sitting here. I amen. hope you have felt the freedom of yeah. Jesus because he is our healer and deliverer. And he amen. loves you. And we love yes. you. And we thank you for joining us. May this be the day you rise up in Jesus' name.